All right, let's look at problem number three. I'm going to read the problem. A two kilogram particle moving along the x-axis experiences the force shown in the figure to the left. The particle's velocity is four meters per second at x equal to zero. And what is its velocity at x equal to two meters and x equal to four meters? So what, one of the ways that we can solve this is using work because we can figure out if we have a, a graph that gives us the force and distance, then we can integrate into this graph and we're going to figure out what the work is because the work done is equal to the integral force times dx. This is the, the integral equation or this is sometimes force times delta x if the force is constant throughout the trip. In this case, the force is not constant so we're thinking about this as an integral where the force can change over time. Um, but of course, because this is an integral and we don't have an equation for f, we have a graph. What we can just do is calculate the area of those triangles to see what's going on. So then we'll say, okay, the work done from going from 0 to 2 meters, the work done from going from 0 to 2 meters is going to be the area underneath this curve from 0 to 2. So that's going to be 10 times 2 times a half, which is just going to be 10. And work is measured in the same units as energy, so it's going to be in joules. So we're looking at this first question, what is the velocity at x equal to 2 meters? And so we know the work done from getting from 0 to 2 meters is 10 joules. And so if we know the change in energy, we can figure out the change in the velocity because we know that work and kinetic energy are related to each other through the work energy theorem, which is that the work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And the change in kinetic energy is going to be 1 half m v final squared minus 1 half m v initial squared. And since we know that the particle's velocity is 4 meters per second at x equal to 0 when we're starting, that's going to be we plug in here. We're going to plug in the 4 meters per second into this one. And what we want to know is what is this v final. And we now know that this is 10 joules for the first problem at least. So then what we'll do is isolate v final. And if I do that, I'm going to write this over here v final squared I'm going to take v final squared I'm going to move this to the other side so it's going to be work plus one half m v initial squared and then I would have to multiply by 2 and divide by m that's going to cancel out this half the m's here are going to cancel it's going to leave me with a 2w and an m over here I'll just write it out 2 times the work over the mass plus vi squared, and then finally take a square root. 2 times the work over the mass plus vi squared. That is our equation to figure out the final velocity at a certain point. So we can plug in 10. We can plug in 10 for the work. 2, take a square root. 2 times 10 divided by the mass. We know from the problem the mass is 2 plus the initial velocity, which was 4 from the problem right here, 4. And I get squared. I get squared to 26, turn that into a decimal, 5.09 rounds to 5. So for the first part, say that at x equal to 2 meters, the velocity is going to be equal to 5 meters per second, or 5.1 meters per second. You can do the same thing with the other one. So instead of, let me see, okay, so we get to find the area underneath this and this. Well, it's going to be the same area, right, because it's 10 going this way, 2 going this way. So that's also 10, but this is positive 10, and this is negative 10, and altogether the area is 0. So from here to here, the change in kinetic energy is zero, and you're going to have the exact same initial or the same exact same final velocity as initial velocity. So you already know 
that at x equal to 4 meters, your velocity is going to be exactly the same as original, 4 meters per second. There you go. Done.